Hello Engineering Central, this is Mr. B here again. I'm going to speak to you today about a couple different gears. The idler gear and compound gears. So the learning goals for today are to describe the purpose of an idler gear. What are they? And why do we care? Describe the purpose of a compound gear. What are they? How do we care? Or why do we care? And how do we build them? And then also how to calculate reductions on more complex gear systems like a compound gear system. So one of the challenges, or side effects you might call it, of using gears is that gears reverse motion. So the driven gear, this guy down here, if it's moving in this direction, that means that the driven gear, the one that's being driven by it, is moving in the opposite direction. So this one is moving in this direction. But does that matter? Sometimes it matters. But what can you do about it? Well, that's where idler gears come into play. So idlers are the ones that are in between. So they make the output gear spin in the same direction as the input gear. So if the input gear is spinning in this direction, and you want the driven gear to also be spinning in this direction, then you need to have an idler gear. So the idler gear kind of bridges that gap. You can use an idler gear in order to make everything spin in the same direction. Now, what does that do to a reduction? So the idler gear actually has nothing to do with the reduction. So check it out. So here is a gear system without an idler gear at all. It's a 12 to 60 gear ratio. So that means it's a gear reduction of five. So in this configuration, are we outputting five times the torque or five times the speed? Hopefully you can figure that out. But the gear reduction here is five. Now here we've got a very, very similar setup, except with an idler gear in between. So here's the idler gear. So you've got a 12 tooth gear as the input gear. You've got a 60 tooth gear as the output gear. But you've got this 36 tooth gear in the middle. So what happens to your reduction? Well, let's do the math. The gear reduction of, of the first set of gears here is, a, is 36 divided by 12, because we've got a 12 to 36 ratio. So that equals three. Gear reduction number two, so this guy to this guy, well, we've got a 36 to 60 ratio. That means 60 divided by 36, which equals 1.667. So you multiply those two together. We've got a, a three reduction and a 1.667 reduction. Multiply those two guys together, and we still end up with a five overall reduction. So that means that the idler gear does absolutely nothing to the gear reduction. Now let's check out this system. Look how complex this guy is. We've got one, two, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got seven gears in this gear train. We've got a 12 tooth to a 36, to a 36, to a 60, to a 12, to a 36, to a 60. Wow, that's complex, right? But ultimately, if you're trying to figure out the mechanical advantage that you get, even from a complex system like this, all you care about is the 12 tooth and the 60 tooth, the driving gear and the driven gear. So what we still have, even in this system, is a 12 to 60 ratio, which is a five reduction. So the only gears that matter in a reduction are the first and the last. The idler gears, while they may be useful, they don't actually give you any mechanical advantage. So why do we care? Why would we use them? What is the use if you don't get any, any advantage out of them? Well, we've already spoken that they reverse motion. So if you want things to spin in a particular direction, then you can use an idler. They are also useful for spanning long distances. So we've got a fairly simple um, gear set up here that the sole purpose of those idlers is to span a long distance. If you've got one motor, you might have the motor sticking through an axle right in the middle of this gear, but you don't have your wheels um, very close, you have your wheels over here, Well, you need some idlers in order to span that distance. So they are still quite useful. Okay, but what about a more mechanical advantage? Let's say we need more than what we're getting in a typical gear setup. Well, here is where compound gears can come into play. So sometimes a design may require more mechanical advantage than a single gear ratio can provide, regardless of if you've got a 12 to 500 
gear ratio, you may require more than that. So a VEX robot design might require a 12 to 500 gear ratio, but we don't have a 500 tooth gear available. So what are we going to do? Well, here you go. We can build a compound gear reduction. So you use multiple gears on the same mechanism. So if you check this out, here's the driving gear. It's a 12 tooth. Here's the driven gear. It's a 60 tooth. But wait, look in the, in the middle. We've also got, so we've got the driving gear here that's driving this big gear. Then on the same axle, so that one's a 60 tooth. Then on the same axle as that 60 tooth gear, we've got another 12 tooth gear. So really what we've got is a 12 to 60 gear ratio here, 12 to 60, and then another 12 to 60. So what advantage do we have from here? Well, with multiple gear pairs, we have essentially a, a, a quite a simple, two different simple gear setups. So the 12 to 60 and a 12 to 60, we've still got a driving gear, we've still got a driven gear, but the gear reduction is a little bit more complex here. It's, this is a compound gear reduction. How do we figure it out? Well, we do our trusty um, reductions here. So compound gear reduction number one, this one right here is a 12 to 60. So that means we've got a five reduction. So this one is a 12 to 60. That means that we've got a five reduction. We've also got another 12 to 60. That means we've got another five reduction. So that means we multiply those two, five times five, we've got 25 times more torque in this setup or if you reverse it so that this becomes the driving gear, this one over here becomes the driving gear, and this one here becomes the driven gear, 25 times the speed. So now all of a sudden, this, this setup, the way it is, driving gear here, driven gear here, that's 25 times the torque as the motor output on its own. Now we're talking. They can easily take this to an extreme, maybe not easily, because this was take, would take a long time, but check out this extreme compound gear system. It has 12, 12 to 60 reductions. So that means it's an overall reduction of 244,140,625. So what that means is the drive gear, whichever one that is, whether it's this one over here or this one over here, wherever, whichever one you want to attach the motor to, or probably in this case, a series of motors, much more powerful motors than what we actually have. That means the drive gear must spin 244 million times to get the output gear to spin once. So at that rate, spinning the input once per second would take about seven years and nine months for the output to spin win once. So this is taken to an extreme, but that's a lot of mechanical advantage there. You can also apply the same principles to sprockets and chains. And we have sprockets and chains in class. So in this system right here, we've got a 12 tooth, 12 tooth sprocket to a 30 tooth sprocket. My circle is not very good there, but that's okay. You still get the point. Gear ratio here, exactly the same as a typical gear system. We've got a 12 to 30 ratio. That means the reduction is 2.5. So in this setup right here with the sprockets and chains, you have 2.5 times the mechanical advantage, whichever way you go on this situation. Um, you've got two and a half times the torque of the motor on its own without the use of idler gears, notice. So you can actually use chains and sprockets to span large distances without having to use a whole bunch of idler gears. So in this lesson, we've learned how to use compound gear systems to radically increase the mechanical advantage that you can um, obtain out of your systems. We've also used why we care about idler gears and what their purpose is. Then right at the end here, we've seen sprockets and chains and how we can apply the same principles, figure out reductions, gear reductions out of a, a sprocket and chain setup. Hopefully this will help you guys as you move forward in building more complex systems.